Hi, hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video, I am going to show you how to use uh, Duration API, which uh, came out with uh, Kotlin uh, 1.6.0 version. Now, even though that uh, version uh, came out uh, a month ago, in uh, December 2021, I guess, it's uh, still an amazing API and uh, that's why I have decided to share with you. So uh, basically, a Duration API is a class uh, inside a uh, Kotlin uh, standard library, which will help us to manage uh, time and duration in our Android application. So uh, without uh, further ado, I'm going to open up my Android Studio project and uh, show you how to use this API. Now, the first thing uh, which uh, you need to do, uh, you need to check if you are using a Kotlin Gradle plugin uh, 1.6.0 at least, because this Duration plugin uh, came out with uh, that uh, same version. Okay, so now I'm going to open up our main activity. So uh, how can we represent a time or duration in our uh, Android application? Using this uh, new uh, duration API, of course. Uh, well, let me show you. So here I'm going to create one variable named uh, days number. And uh, I'm going to write here, for example, maybe let's say number one. So this is just an integer value. And now we will be able to access uh, one uh, a very useful extension property, which is available in our duration API. So I'm going to write here days. So now you can see that there are actually two different imports. The first one from a Kotlin time duration companion uh, class, and the second one uh, from a Kotlin time uh, class. Now this uh, second one is actually deprecated. So as you can see, we have this uh, documentation that says that this uh, is actually a deprecated. So let's just uh, revert that to change. And here I'm going to import this uh, first one. So from this uh, duration companion, okay? And there we go. So now we can actually access this uh, property. And uh, down below, I'm going to just uh, print the result of this uh, variable. So days a uh, number. I'm going to run this application. And then uh, you will see that uh, we are going to receive here a uh, 1D, which uh, actually represents a uh, one day. So the type of this uh, variable is actually a duration. And uh, we can also open up this duration class. So I'm going to select this uh, days property and click control B. So we can actually open up this duration uh, Kotlin file, okay? So this is the actual source code. This is our duration uh, class. And uh, down below inside this uh, companion object, we can see many different uh, properties and also extension properties uh, which we can use. So down below you can also see that uh, we have, for example, a nanoseconds uh, extension property, which is available on uh, three different types, integer value, a long, and a double. And below that we can see a microseconds on those uh, three types as well. Then we have a milliseconds, then we have a seconds, a minutes, then we have hours. So on uh, three of those types, integer long and double. And finally we have days. So basically a days property is a top property in this duration API and there is no such a thing as a weeks representation here in duration API. So we have only days. All right. And down below in this duration class, you can also see some deprecated functions, which we have already seen. So instead of using those functions, we are going to use those extension properties. So now let's go back here to our main activity and uh, I'm going to show you uh, some more examples as well. So here let's create another variable, uh, for example, uh, days in a millis. And uh, now uh, you might be wondering how can we convert a day or multiple days in a milliseconds? Well, very easily. So here I'm going to type uh, one dot days, so the same uh, extension property. And then I'm going to add uh, one more uh, property here called uh, in a whole uh, milliseconds. So there are here uh, many different properties which we can choose. So for example, we can convert this uh, day in uh, hours, in a microseconds, a milliseconds, a minutes, a nanoseconds, and a whole seconds as well. In this case, uh, I'm going to call here in a whole milliseconds. And let's uh, create here one more log statement here. So days in a milliseconds. Let's uh, run our app once again. And uh, here, as you can see, uh, we have received uh, one value, which is basically a representation of our single day in a milliseconds. So those are some uh, very convenient uh, extension properties, which we can easily use to convert uh, days into seconds, uh, seconds into days, etc. Also, we can access here uh, some other different properties, like uh, I have already shown you in this duration uh, class. 
So for example, we can uh, access here uh, one uh, hour and so on. So we can call here just uh, hours uh, property. Uh, next, let me show you a few more examples. So I'm going to create here uh, one more variable named uh, days uh, minus hours. And uh, here I'm going to say, for example, uh, one day or actually days uh, minus, let's say, uh, two hours. So let's import this uh, companion uh, as well. So this uh, first one. And uh, I want to say here in a uh, whole hours. So let's create here one more uh, log statement. So days uh, minus hours. Let's run our app. Let's now observe the log yet. Okay, so now we have received a value of uh, 22. Because uh, one day has uh, 24 hours. And when we say 24 minus 2, then we are going to get the uh, number 22. Also, uh, as I already mentioned before, uh, those extension properties are available on uh, three different types. So on a double value, on a long value, and on an integer value as well. So here we can also say, for example, 1.0, and uh, it will work the same. Now let's open up our duration class here uh, once again. And uh, also there is uh, one uh, very useful function here uh, called the convert. So there it is. This uh, function will basically convert the given time duration value expressed in the specific source unit into the specific target unit. And here we can also see this uh, new class uh, called the duration unit. And this duration unit class actually represents those uh, time measuring units like uh, nanoseconds, uh, microseconds, uh, milliseconds and up to days. Okay, now here let's go back to our main activity and uh, I'm going to create here uh, one more variable. I'm going to name this variable convert. Uh, days to hours, for example. And here I'm going to call this duration class and then I'm going to call a convert function. So here the first value is the actual value which we want to use to convert. I'm going to type here, uh, let's say maybe uh, 1.0, so number one. And uh, I want to convert here a uh, source unit which is uh, days in this time, so duration uh, unit dot uh, days. And as a target value or a target unit, I'm going to specify duration a unit dot hours. So now let's create here one more log statement. Let's write here um, convert days to hours. Let's run our app, observe the log yet, and let's see the actual result. So now we have received a result which says uh, 24, 24.0. So we have basically converted uh, one day into hours. So one day contains uh, 24 hours. So it's a very convenient function. And you can also explore uh, some more different uh, properties and uh, functions inside this duration uh, class. So here we can also see some uh, deprecated functions which uh, we are not going to use. Then uh, down below we have some uh, also useful functions for parsing uh, ISO uh, string into a duration. So this function for example will uh, parse a string that represents a duration in this uh, ISO uh, 8601 format. So you can see uh, one of those examples how that uh, ISO format string uh, looks like. So here it is. This is just uh, one example of uh, this uh, ISO uh, duration format. And let me show you how this uh, format uh, will actually be used to convert this uh, string into actual duration. So let's open up our main activity here. I'm going to create another variable here uh, named uh, ISO to duration. I'm going to call here duration class dot parse and here as a value I'm going to specify that uh, same string from that documentation. Now let's create here uh, one more uh, uh, log statement. So ISO to duration. Let's run our app. So now you can see that we have successfully converted this uh, ISO uh, formatted string with this uh, exact value. And we have received here a uh, one day, two hours, three minutes, and uh, 4.058 seconds. Now there are also some more uh, useful functions from this duration uh, library or class. And what we can also do here, let me just uh, show you with one more variable. I'm going to type here now duration to ISO. And let's call here, uh, let's open up the brackets. Let's type here, for example, three days plus uh, six hours plus uh, 12 uh, minutes. And uh, let's convert that to ISO string. So now you can see that this uh, to ISO uh, string uh, function is also available from this duration uh, API and uh, it will allow us to convert uh, the actual duration into this uh, ISO uh, formatted string. So now let's uh, here create uh, one more log statement. 
so duration to ISO this time. Let's run our app. And uh, now we have received that uh, ISO uh, formatted string from this duration which we have already specified. So 3 days, uh, 6 hours and uh, 12 minutes. And uh, finally uh, there is just uh, one more thing uh, which I want to show you with this duration library. So I'm going to show you how you can uh, extract uh, those uh, duration values from this uh, ISO string. So now I'm going to just uh, copy this uh, same uh, variable down below. I'm going to name this variable ISO to duration number 2 let's say. And uh, down below I'm going to write uh, ISO duration number 2. And then I'm going to call here one function named uh, two components. So now with this uh, function uh, we will be able to access uh, those duration uh, elements like uh, minutes, uh, seconds, uh, nanoseconds and so on. So just uh, call this uh, function. So we have hours, minutes, seconds and nanoseconds in this case. Let's also create here uh, one uh, log statement inside. And uh, let's log here uh, hours, uh, minutes and uh, nanoseconds. So now from this uh, ISO string we are going to extract uh, each and every duration unit from that uh, same string. So let's open up our logcat and uh, there you go. So now we have received here 26 uh, value for hours, 3 for minutes, 4 for uh, seconds and uh, for nanoseconds as well. Okay, so now you have seen uh, what this duration API uh, has to offer to us developers for uh, managing uh, time and duration in our uh, Android application. You have seen how easy it is to access those extension properties on three different types, integer, long and double. And with those extension properties, we can easily represent time in our application. And we can also use some math operators to add, subtract, divide or even multiply all those values. So for this video that will be all. I'm sure that you are going to use this duration API in your future projects. Feel free to comment down below about this duration API. Like this video if you find it helpful of course. And uh, see you the next one.